Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 541, Weight Loss Secrets. How Drinking Alcohol Counteracts Fat Loss. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about weight loss secrets. Now I'm not, I've been on a diet my whole life. I, I understand weight loss both personally, physically, because I understand the physiology behind it, how the body works. And I have the additional advantage of being able to read medical research and understanding the medical research as it comes out and all of the new information that is brought to the fore. And I also understand how patients lose weight and the people who are successful and the people who are not successful. And so for today, one of the things that I talk to patients about is while you're trying to get your ideal weight, you must abstain from alcohol. And most of the time, it looks like the look on their face is like I just took away their best friend. And alcohol shouldn't have that role in your life, obviously. But that is alcohol is a social type drink. And it is something that you will have to uh, behaviorally change while you're trying to get down to your ideal weight. But the bang is is worth the buck, basically. You don't have to like not go out, you can drink something else as long as it doesn't have sugar in it. But there are ways that alcohol work in your body that actually preclude you losing fat from your body. It's not that it's a carbohydrate because it's not. Some of the things in alcohol like mixers or wine, which has grapes, have out, have carbohydrate in them. But in general, alcohol itself is not a carbohydrate. Um, it is basically a toxin. So <clears throat> toxins are uh, chemicals that our body prioritizes in our liver to remove as fast as possible. One of the reasons we can't drink alcohol while we're losing uh, fat is because <clears throat> when we um, ha- drink alcohol, we then shut down all the other processes of breaking down carbohydrates, breaking down fats or muscle, and we don't lose any weight. It just shuts that part down while, it, while our liver is dealing with alcohol because it's trying to get something bad out of our system. So I'm going to back up for just a second. There's a couple hormones that are affected by alcohol too. And one of the hormones is insulin. The intake of any kind of alcohol, I don't care what kind it is, stimulates insulin. Insulin, when it's stimulated, makes you insulin resistant. Your body becomes insulin resistant. You make too much insulin and you make fat out of everything you eat. That is one of the side effects of drinking alcohol. And one of the ones that causes uh, it to be a problem when you are insulin resistant, already obese, and you drink alcohol, it's a double whammy. You make yourself worse and you can't burn calories or burn fat for a period of time after you've been drinking. The second is cortisol. Alcohol actually increases cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that uh, in the balance of things in your body, you have you have uh, anabolism, or a- that's the growth of tissue, and then you have catabolism, which is the breakdown of tissue. So cortisol causes you to break down muscle and break down fat, but then replace it. So you replace it faster then you're breaking it down. But you're breaking down a lot of muscle, which is something you don't want. Muscle burns your calories. So that is something that we don't want alcohol to cause in us. The other thing is is that uh, thyroid has to be normal for your weight loss program. You have to have enough iodine in your your diet. And um, that is a necessary hormone, which can be blocked when you're drinking alcohol. Last is testosterone. It's not necessarily uh, affected by alcohol itself, 
But if you don't have enough testosterone on board, which means if you're over 50 and you haven't replaced your testosterone, then your metabolic rate drops drastically and you lose muscle, lose muscle, and gain fat more readily. That makes it much harder, harder to diet. So when you eat various types of foods, let's talk about insulin. When you eat various types of foods, insulin is stimulated the most when you eat carbohydrate and fat. And that's usually most of our, of our snacks. The easy snacks are carbohydrate or chips or, and dip and things that have a lot of high fat, high carb. That's the worst kind of combination that you can eat. And in this way, alcohol is taking the place of the carbohydrate because it's stimulating the insulin. So alcohol plus fats or alcohol plus carb is, is a double whammy. And that actually shuts down your burning of calories for a long period of time after. And it, it also makes you gain fat. So it is not, it, it thwarts your weight loss. Basically, it is a roadblock to it. So when I have people who are serious about weight loss, which most people come to me are until they hear what they have to do to achieve weight loss, then, um, then we talk about changing behavior. And one of the behaviors, not all of the only behavior, but changing the behaviors is decreasing carbohydrates, not eating carbohydrates with fats, but eating, car eating a little bit of carb with a lot of protein. That is ideal for uh, a snack or a, a meal while you're trying to lose weight and not drinking anything that has alcohol in it or sugar in it. That, that basically will um, negate all of the work you've done to eat normally or eat healthy, a healthy meal. I have a diet we call Dr. Moppin's Low Carb Diet that I've followed and, I, um, and I'm not perfect, no one is. But I followed it to lose weight. I followed it to stay, stay at an ideal weight. And basically, it follows physiology and research on the human body and how, the, in general, we deal with, with uh, carbohydrates and proteins. And it, it is uh, basically a non-calorie counting diet, but it is a low-carb diet. So you count carbs. And carbs uh, come in grams. So when you look at a package, it'll tell you how many grams of carbohydrate that you will eat if you eat one serving. So uh, you have to remember it's one serving and not the whole bag. So the carbohydrates in any feeding or any meal should be less than 25 grams of carb. If you follow this, then you will not gain weight. You will not make your insulin too high you will actually not be hungry like you are if you add more carbohydrates than 25 because 25 is the magic number in everybody, no matter what size you are, because it's, it's the dose of carbohydrate over which, if it's 26 or more, you overstimulate your insulin. High insulin makes fat and insulin resistance. So that's what I base this diet on. You can have all the fruits and vegetables that are, that are frozen or fresh, not canned because there's sugar in that and um, not jellies or anything that has added sugar. Even juices have added sugar, so you have to watch that. But, but basically, fruit and vegetables that are fresh, essentially, you can have as much of that as you want to eat. That is not limited except for bananas and white potatoes. Those are actually counted as carbs. Uh, other than that, you can, you can eat as much meat, as much protein. You can eat cheese. You can eat fat. You can eat butter. But you'll find that without the carbohydrates at every meal, you will not be as hungry and you'll not be able to eat as great a volume. Carbohydrates make you hungry. Once again, alcohol makes you really hungry and it makes you overeat because you lose your self-control. When you get happy and you stop thinking about what you're doing, you mindlessly eat. And that's something that we have to stop if we're going to actually be successful at weight loss. So you have to kind of keep track of what you're eating. Many of my patients I ask uh, to write down everything that passes their lips. That means water, that means drinks, that means juices, and it, everything they eat and the amount so that we can go through the diet or they can go through it themselves and find out you know, if they didn't lose weight that week, what they ate that was was not applicable and to weight loss, something that halted their weight loss. 
So that's, and that's just the diet portion because there are other portions to weight loss and that has to do with exercise. One time I had um, a patient come in and she tried, she tried dieting, but no exercise. Then she tried exercise and no, and no dieting. And she just could not understand why she hadn't lost weight. Well, if you're sedentary and you, and you're sitting most of your day, you're not up moving around having real aerobic exercise, the kind that makes you a little bit of, almost out of breath, raises your heart rate. That kind of exercise plus eating properly gives you the right mixture to actually lose weight, but you also have to avoid sweets and you have to avoid alcohol. So um, that those are kind of my rules, and I've been really successful with the patients that have followed it, and many people don't have the self-control to follow it. You have to do this for 3, 6, 12 months. It depends on how much weight you've gained. If you've gained 10 pounds, it may be less than 2 months that you have to follow this rule. And when you go to your maintenance, when you've hit your ideal weight, you can add things back slowly, not go back and just eat everything you ever ate before. That's not the goal. The goal is a lifestyle change. Eat a little bit of this or a little bit of that or have, a, have an alcoholic beverage that you liked in the past, but I wouldn't advise going back to margaritas, which may be 600 to 800 calories. I mean, you have to go to something that is no sugar added for you to still safely drink alcohol. When you add carbohydrate to it, it makes it impossible to stay at an ideal weight. So um, when you're back into maintenance and you are back to adding alcohol back, what do you drink socially? Uh, how do you drink socially? One of the best ways I've found is to drink your alcoholic beverage and then drink a glass of water in between each alcoholic beverage. If you can't drink a glass of water in between to water it down, then you can't have another drink. And basically that will control the number of drinks you drink in an evening and you won't get as, um, as wasted. Um, choose your alcohol wisely. I'm gonna help you with that in a few minutes. Only eat protein with your alcohol. Don't eat carbohydrate. None of the chips, you can eat peanuts, you can eat nuts, and sometimes cheese, but avoid the carbohydrates because that makes the damage worse. You're going to gain a lot more weight if you eat a carbohydrate with alcohol. And then if you can, limit your uh, amount of alcohol to two drinks. That means if you're drinking um, an alcoholic beverage, not beer or wine, that means two single drinks, not doubles, that's a shot in each drink of alcohol. And you can have, you can use a mixer, but not a mixer with added sugar. Um, and then if you have a glass of wine, some of my patients say, well, I just have a glass of wine, but they drink a bottle of wine every night. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I mean, unless you're an alcoholic, that is ridiculous. So you can have two half full wine glasses, and that is considered two glasses of wine not a full to the brim of the largest wine glass you can find. You're just fooling yourself if you do that. So let me just go over. Um, we, have a, we have a table here that you can follow if you're watching, but I'll go over it verbally for those of you who are just listening. Um, beers are not all the same. So light beers have about 100 calories and 5 grams of carbohydrate in a 12-ounce can. So five grams isn't a lot, it's still carbohydrate. Uh, beer as a choice is probably not ideal for people who are uh, trying to stay at an ideal weight or trying to lose weight. Regular beer is 150 calories per beer and 10 grams of carbohydrate. So in a 12 ounce, in a 12 ounce can, that will, is still under the 25 that we discussed, but it is carbohydrate and will be making it harder for you to um, to lose fat. IP ale is the worst. It's 240 grams of, um, excuse me, calories, and it's 22 grams of carb per, um, per, I guess, uh, 12 ounce serving, I guess, which is like, a, um, you know, those ale cups. I don't drink ale, so I don't know. Um, wine, dry red wine, uh, is 150 calories per glass and per serving, and that's four grams of carbs, so that's not bad. Dry white wine is 125 calories, and it's three grams of carbohydrate. 
Sparkling white wine is 110 calories and 2 grams per serving or per glass. So that's probably the best in terms of carbohydrate plus alcohol. But if you go to spirits, uh, vodka, gin, whiskey, tequila, and other spirits, um, let's see, I can't think of others. Those are the ones we have in our house. <clears throat> it's 95 calories a shot, for example. But there's no carb unless you add a carb with a mixer. So if you're drinking vodka and you're not adding a mixer, there's no, that's probably the best thing to drink. Because you can have your 95 calories and no carb, so it isn't as hard for your body to get rid of it. And it's not going to make you gain as much weight. The problem is the mixers. And the mixers are very sugary, especially daiquiris and margaritas and any of those that you actually would have at a party um, or for a treat, you're going to pay the price the next day. So not only we talked about you losing your <clears throat> ability to understand or, or remember what you just drank, how many times, how many drinks you drank, but you're also going to be increasingly hungry. That's also an issue. So the bottom line is that while you're losing weight and when you're trying to maintain weight, you have to cut out alcohol during the weight loss part and, and be, very, be very stringent in your amount of alcohol that you, that you actually drink while you're trying not to gain it all back. Because we want to lose fat, we don't want, want to lose muscle, and we don't want to gain it back after we've gone to all that work. So being very careful with alcohol is probably the first thing and probably the easiest thing for you to control if you think about it ahead of time and just don't put, put caution to the wind and just drink whatever somebody serves you. You'll have to ask for certain kinds of drinks so that you don't gain weight when you're trying to lose weight. So that's one of my secrets of weight loss. And um, <clears throat> we have my Dr. Moppin's Low Carb Diet on our website that you can go look for. And we'll have it um, in the blog that goes along with, um, with this podcast. Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something today. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.